Hello, this is the 20 inch monitor from my wife's computer and I have it uh, hooked up to uh, a little laptop that we have here at the lab and uh, it, the monitor started exhibiting this, this problem here. It goes on and off like that and there's a slight sound coming off the speakers there. So um, we're going to take this apart. It looks like it's a power issue because you can see that the uh, on and off button is going on and off once in a while anyways there it is yeah so it looks like maybe a, a power supply issue perhaps some uh, blown capacitors so we're going to take this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside and see if we can fix it okay so we're going to start taking this thing apart this one and first lie. There's four screws that hold the pedestal, so we're going to take that off first. So there's the pedestal. Okay, so now there are, looks like, one, two, three screws on the bottom over here. And it looks like that will remove the whole cover, so let's take that off. Okay, so we've taken the three screws off, so now we're going to try to pry this thing up. Let me see. Okay, so just as we expected, you take out the three screws here, then with the screwdriver, you you pop it. I'm going to close it. Okay. You pop it right over here. So there's little little catches right there. You can see one right there there's another one there and it goes all the way around so with the screwdriver you just pop it and it okay. comes right out okay so here's a good look at the back of the display uh, this looks like a video board over here to this for the uh, TFT display and the power supply is probably underneath this cover over here so we are going to take that apart next and look for any evidence of blown capacitors or blown circuits or something okay so there are four screws to remove this panel off there's one two three and four over here and now we have to pop off these connectors and there it is so one of them came off you just use a pair of tweezers and you kind of pry them off so there's one here there's another and one here another one here and there's some uh, foil that's used for EME purposes to, to block the emissions from coming out. Um, so there was one big piece right here we had to remove. And these two can stay in place. Actually, they probably okay. don't. Nick connect it out. Okay, and we're going to take that cover off next. Okay, so it turns out that we do indeed have to remove those two foils. One of them was right here. The other one was right there because there are two, four additional connectors that we have to pop off as well. Okay, so we've removed that piece, but now there's one more connector underneath here. So once again, we're going to use the tweezers to this. Okay. pull that guy off. Let me see. Oh. Okay, use the tweezers too. Alright, here it is. So here is the power supply board. Uh, we're going to see if we can take this metal cover off of this board so that we can look at the other side because that's where all the capacitors are at. And four different school districts. Okay, so this board, in order for this board to come out, there's four uh, Phillips uh, screwdriver, uh, screws. And Let's see what okay. it looks like. Okay, and this one too, okay. The other board also has four Phillips. Okay, now we may have to 
take these uh, oh, nuts, these nuts two out for oh, the uh, connectors, the VJ connector and the uh, HDMI. I'm sorry, the uh, DVI connector. Be right back. Okay, so this is the main power supply board that we just took out, and sure enough, okay, I don't know if you can see it here, but these capacitors are bulged up. One, there's one here, two, three, and four. Uh, as a comparison, this one here is nice and flat, where these one, two, three, four capacitors are bulged up. So these are 470 microfarad what and voltage? And this one we don't know. We don't know that one because that one is covered up with the Let me see tubing. how many watt voltage. Uh, 25? Let's see. Why? Yeah, 25 volts. So 470 microfarad, 25 volt. So we're going to replace these guys and put it back in the system and see if it well, works. What, what this one? I don't know. Yeah, we have to open have to that, one. that one apart. Okay, but my hunch was correct. Uh, it looks like it's a capacitor issue on the input uh, power supply board. Okay, so in order to take this board out, we have to take these four uh, captive uh, lock uh, screws here and just use a pair of uh, needle nose to go counterclockwise uh, to loosen it. No and then uh, the board comes right out like so and if you look at these capacitors they're all nice and flat the tops of them are nice and flat so the problem is indeed on the other board the main power supply board as uh, as I suspected so I'm gonna put this board back in and we're gonna replace the four capacitors on the other board and hopefully they'll fix the problem Okay, so we have removed three of the four capacitors. You can see the marking right there. So there is a polarity on these capacitors. So as you can see right here, this, this uh, band over here is, is marked uh, minus, and it's bronze in color. So that will go towards this hashed yes. area over here. Goes like that, okay. So we have one, two, three capacitors that have been removed. This last one is 330 microfarad which I don't happen to have here in my lab, so uh, we're going to put a 470 in there. Usually uh, you can put in uh, the same value or larger, and as long as the voltage um, matches, again, if, if it exceeds, uh, this is 25 volts, the original ones, we're going to put a 35 volt capacitor in there. That should do it. Okay. Okay, just to remind everybody, you will need one of these solder suckers. Okay. And you're going to need, of course, a soldering iron like that. And there's the second capacitors being installed right now. And you're going to trim the leads afterwards. Okay, and on to the next uh, capacitors we go. Mind the polarity. There it is. Put a little bit of flux. A little bit of solder on the tip. And the flux should suck that solder right up. That's all there is to it. Okay, so we're taking the last capacitor off. Okay. And that's it. Okay, so here's the board after we replaced uh, the one, two, three, four capacitors. And as you remember, this last capacitor had some reheat shrink tubing around it, so we've replaced it with the new piece here. And now I'm ready to put it back in, and just uh, this board here attaches to this board 
via the six pin connector right here so you can see the six pins right there right there so you have to kind of slide it in from the side a little bit and plug it in like so and then it just sits flush on its to its mount then what we have to do is put the four screws back in and this unit is ready to go back in okay so now we're ready to put the assembly back on onto the board so that means we have to connect all the connectors back up uh, this connector here is very important there's a key right here in one of the pins and if you look at the board there's a missing there's one a pin. missing pin okay so that key goes to that to that missing pin basically and you just press it in place and that's okay it. and then we're gonna do the same thing for the other connectors Okay, so as I remember, the pink goes on the right side and the blue goes on the left side. Did one same thing, right? Yeah. Okay, we got that one there, so now we're going to do two on this side here. Okay. Okay, so everything is in. So now we can screw this unit down and then we're going to put some copper foil tape in the same spots as this uh, uh, aluminum tape came out of. So we're going to maintain the EME okay. integrity. Okay, so here is the uh, power supply uh, board and video board assembly back in. All the connectors have been installed. There's one, two, three four and five and this unit is screwed down so now we're ready to put the back cover on okay so the last bit that we have to do here is we have to put this copper foil tape in the same location that it came out of okay and, like that yeah yeah cool. yeah that's it And that's to prevent electromagnetic emissions from coming out of the display and acting like an FM transmitter. So, and messing up the rest of electronics in your house. Okay, so we have finished putting the copper foil tape. There's one, two, three, and four spots. And now we're ready to put the uh, cover, oh, the back cover back on. And it just goes in the same way uh, that it came off. It just snaps into place. And then there's the three screws. So that there's three screws.
Okay, and then we can put the pedestal back on and we're gonna hook it up and test it out. there is to it and there it is uh, fully functional uh, and basically all it was is those four capacitors and they they tend to do that after a while so it's not unexpected but uh, as you can see it was uh, probably about 15 minutes worth of time to take it apart and put it back in and uh, the cost of those capacitors are like you know 20 cents a piece so uh, you can get them at Radio Shack or any other electronic uh, parts uh, supply store. So that's about it. Another job uh, done.